Morning everyone. So today, remember yesterday we did our interesting facts about Queen Elizabeth II and today I've written you a little traditional tale about her. Now if you remember the criteria and the points about a traditional tale are, they are very very old, they are based in a faraway land, they normally have um, creatures that speak and they're told time and time again. That's what makes a traditional tale. But if you're writing your own traditional tale based on a real character, they can't be make-believe, but you can try and write one based on those principles and on those little bits of information that you've got. So you can have things in them that make them sound like a traditional tale. So see if you can pick out the things in mine about Queen Elizabeth II that make it sound like a traditional tale. Remember what kind of characters that they have in them. Obviously, this won't have fairies in it because, well, there aren't fairies around Queen Elizabeth II. But it does have something in them that are real because she was one before she became a queen. What would you need to be before you became a queen, do you think? Here we go. Once upon a time. That's a clue. But not too long ago, there lived a prince and a princess in not too far away land, who had two beautiful daughters. They were the most beautiful princesses in all of the land. One had the most curliest hair you had ever seen, but the other, her hair was straight and black as night. <coughs> These two princesses were the best of friends and they loved to run around and play all day in the garden. The eldest princess adored animals. She loved her doggies. But at the age of three, just thinking that the only animal she could ever love would be dogs, she was given a birthday present of a pony. She loved that pony almost as much as she loved her dogs. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, she laughed. This is the best present I have ever, ever had, she cried, hugging her pony so tight. The pony thought to itself, oh my goodness me, I think I can't breathe. The pony had an independent thought. Is that part of our traditional tales? Criteria, can you remember what points we need for a traditional tale? Now, the little girl's grandfather was the king of the land at this time. And the girl's, the princess's uncle, he was going to be king one day. But all of a sudden, he decided he didn't want to be king anymore. He wanted to go and live off in a different country because he had met a woman and he loved this woman and he wanted to marry her. But the grandfather of the princesses said, no, you are not allowed to. It's not allowed in our country for you to marry that woman. And their uncle was cross. He wanted desperately to marry this woman. So he said, right. If I can't marry this woman, I do not want to be king. So the grandfather said, well, so be it then. You don't want to be king. I don't want you to be king. And the eldest princess went to her father one day and said, but daddy, what does this mean? What will grandfather do? Who will become king? If grandfather isn't king and uncle doesn't want to be king, what on earth is going to happen? Who shall become king? And her daddy looked at her and he said with sadness in his eyes because, well, he never wanted to be king. And he said, I will have to do that job because it is my duty. 
And the little princess looked at her daddy and said, you will make the best king in the world. Soon, the princess's father did become king. And the girls and their parents had to move from their house in the city to a big grand palace with hundreds of windows and rooms. The palace was filled with priceless treasures from all over the world. Gifts that had been given to past kings and queens of the land. Little girls that loved to wander found rooms filled with treasures from all over and loved to spend days imagining where they could have come from, who had brought them. The princesses, though, had to go to lessons. They were taught by governesses on how to be proper princesses. They couldn't just run around all day playing with their animals. And they also had to have proper lessons at home, like school lessons. They weren't allowed to go to a real school. But we want to go and meet ordinary people, they shouted at their parents. We don't want to be stuck in this place all day, every day. But you are not ordinary people, their mother said to them. You are princesses, and one day one of you will become queen of this beautiful land. As they grew up, the princesses grew into fine young women. Their father was king and his wife was queen and they were much loved throughout the land. But during the time of the father's monarchy, a great tragedy fell throughout the land as the country and indeed the world started fighting with each other and went to war. The princesses, though, because they had had such a good education at home, wanted to do something to help everybody, but they wanted to do it in secret. How can we do this? How can we make people better? How can we help and volunteer? So, without anybody knowing, apart from the people that needed to know, they trained to be mechanics and help work on motor vehicles and cars and lorries and the machinery that kept the troops busy at home and kept things working around the country because they weren't allowed to go abroad. They worked with other women, but not very many people knew that they were actually the princesses of the king and queen of the country. Now, around this time, the eldest princess had met a young prince who she quite liked. He was very handsome and he was from another country called Greece. She really liked him. He liked him a lot. He was a very tall, handsome man. And she fell in love with him. And just after the war, they saved up their rationing coupons and she bought a wedding dress with that money and they got married. Time passed on again and eventually the princess's father, the king, became poorly and prince, the princess, Elizabeth as she was known, was away on a holiday touring a country called Kenya where there were lots of exotic animals for her to have a look at, tigers and lions and elephants and giraffes. When she found, got news and word was sent to her that her father was poorly. Well, I need to speak with him. I need to find out exactly how poorly she, he is. She was very worried about her father. She was very, very close to him and she needed to know exactly what was wrong with him. But it was hard to get messages from such a faraway country at this time back to her country and her land and her husband had said to her we'll see what we can do and you might be able to speak to him in the morning well the next morning when she woke up everybody was looking at her a bit funny and people were bowing at her and standing and curtsying and she just wasn't quite sure and then she turned and looked at her husband Prince Philip and he had a strange solemn look on his face and she went straight to the phone and saw that 
It was waiting for her to take a phone call and in that next moment she suddenly realised that she was no longer Princess Elizabeth but she was Queen Elizabeth and unfortunately her father had passed away in the night and there was no longer a king in her land and she was now Queen. Elizabeth II, our current Queen, the one that we know and love. And that is my little traditional tale that I wrote for you. So, I've turned some of our interesting facts about Queen Elizabeth into a little traditional tale for you, for today, for your daily read. Remember though, tomorrow, I'm gonna have to try, we're gonna work on how we might start making this a bit of a play script, like a little bit of a, if we had two people or two puppets, he might say this, she might say that, a conversation, basically, that they really might act together as if you're watching a bit of a movie. So I'll have to work on that today to show you how that might work for tomorrow's bit of a read. So I hope you've enjoyed that. For those that are you of you that aren't, um, that are still at home, sorry, that haven't gone into school, um, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a lovely day. It is raining though. I just noticed before when I had a look out. I'll see you later. Bye bye. <laughs>